Hello students, looking at current affairs for 4th April, the news items picked up from the Hindu newspaper are these nine, we'll look at them in detail. The first one, coronavirus toll touches 62, revised testing norms likely. So the number of COVID-19 cases continue to rise in the country with 336 new cases reported in past 24 hours on 3rd April, taking the total tally to 2,547 cases in the country. And 18 more deaths were reported in the last day. So the total number of deaths have gone up to 62 now out of 66,000 samples tested of which 2,547 came positive. 62 deaths have taken place while 162 patients have recovered. They have been discharged. Health Ministry also highlighted its newly launched app which has been downloaded by many people. This is called Arogya Sethi. So in, in the midst of COVID-19, so Health Ministry has come up with this app as such. Then also about the testing criteria, there are there are. Uh, there is hope that revised testing norms would be coming forth, but in an interim advisory which has come from ICMR, Indian Council of Medical Research, it has recommended use of rapid antibody tests in the country's coronavirus hotspots. And antibody positive should be confirmed with further test, which is the RT-PCR, that is reverse transcription polymer chain reaction. So this is the test which has been conducted for COVID-19. So this is through throat nasal swab and this test will be done only after rapid antibody test comes positive. And antibody negatives it is said in these coronavirus hotspots should be quarantined at home. Because even negatives can turn positives later when, when the virus spreads, you know, virus multiplies in the body. So they may be false negatives. So this is the testing criteria which ICMR has put forth and these uh, rigid rules and strict rules for testing have resulted in very few tests taking place across the country. You can see so far 66,000 samples have been tested while countries in Europe, it's a small population are talking of testing 50,000 people in a day. So this is the point you can see the uh, ICMR says those who qualify for testing are uh, should follow should satisfy this criteria either they have traveled to one of the covid hotspot nations or they have been in contact with someone who tested positive or the healthcare workers who are in contact with patients so walk in and asymptomatic cases are not being tested Also, private uh, labs have also been roped in for providing these tests at a price. The price cap on, for them is 4,500 rupees per test. So, here you can see if you have symptoms and have travel history, then you will be tested. Or if you are hospitalized due to severe influenza, respiratory illness, so it, that those people would be tested. Or you have come directly in contact of high risk contacts of COVID-19 confirmed cases. So they will be tested once between day 5 and 14. And those living in the same household with confirmed cases and of course healthcare workers. So the questions are being raised why asymptomatic testing is not taking place in India. So it is said when a person is asymptomatic, the viral load is not likely to be very high in the beginning and a negative report gives a sense of false security. So they can develop the disease within next 14 days. So only symptomatic cases are being tested. Uh, also the testing capacity of IS, each ICMR lab presently is 90 samples per day and India is presently testing around 60 to 70 samples per day in its entire network of 51 labs. Also testing cases have been ordered from Germany as well. So of course there may be a false negative so asymptomatic cases still there is no justification for not allowing the testing to take place because in some asymptomatic cases or even in symptomatic cases a negative false may come forth but uh, if a positive comes forth then contact tracing and restrictions can be imposed at an earlier phase which will ensure that community spreading of COVID-19 does not take place. Then this is 25,000 Indians stuck abroad, but government wants them to wait. 
So there are about 25,000 Indians who are trans stranded in different parts of the world. And Indian government has refused to lift its strict ban on passengers, including Indian citizens, to enter into India. So these restrictions are there for about 37 SARS-CoV-2 affected countries. So these restrictions on anybody entering India is there till the lockdown ends, which is due on 15th April 2020. So amongst the Indian standard are also students whose universities are shut down. There are business travelers who have not been able to return in time before the lockdown. There are tourists who have been stopped from boarding when Indian travel bans went into place. So they are all stranded here and students have also been finding difficulty to meet the ends meet in foreign countries. Then next is PM on Sunday, April 5, light lamps for 9 minutes from 9 p.m. So on the 10th day of the nationwide lockdown imposed due to pandemic of COVID-19, Prime Minister Narendra Modi has asked countrymen to demonstrate a collective will to help fight coronavirus with a token demonstration. He said that token demonstration would be lighting candles, lamps and holding mobile phone torches for 9 minutes from 9 p.m. on April 5, 2020, Sunday. Also, last time, the clapping uh, and banging of thalis was uh, called for by the Prime Minister on, on another Sunday before the lockdown, 21-day lockdown was initiated. So, in that, it had been seen that many came out and you know, came together and they participated in this. So, now, uh, strict instructions have been given that uh, people should stay indoors and you know they can go to the balcony but they should not move out and you know, come together in uh, showing this token demonstration which would be countering uh, or violating social distancing norms then next is offer questions over foreign donations for pm cares so, government has set, sent conflicting signals over the question of foreign donations to PM Cares. So, this is Prime Minister's Citizen Aware Assistance and Relief in Emergency Situations Fund, which has been specifically set up to tackle with COVID-19. And it has been set up as a charitable trust, a public charitable trust on 28 March 2020. So, the official statement says that it is a dedicated national fund with the primary objective of dealing with any kind of emergency or distress situation like uh, the one posed by COVID-19 and provide relief to the affected. So, it's not dedicated just for COVID-19 but any such disease. So, means the funding which would come in if it is not over, if it accumulates, it would be used later. And PM Cares Fund, the questions have been raised on foreign funding coming in. So, initially Indian ambassadors directed to, were directed to mobilize donations from abroad. So, SWIFT, that is you know, international code which is there, Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunication. So, SWIFT code details were made available to accept foreign contributions. But now foreign funds, it is said, would be accepted only from individuals and foundations, not from foreign nations. Also, there are concerns regarding transparency in PM Cares Fund because there is no website where the details of objectives, income and expenditure are put up. So, this raises concerns over, about transparency and accountability of PM Cares. Also, uh, PM Cares Fund has presently put in restrictions for foreign donations, but for Indian donations, there is no restrictions. So it is prepared to accept unlimited tax-free donations from Indian birth. So you see what is SWIFT also. Society for Worldwide Interbank Financial Telecommunications. It's a consortium of member financial institutions. It was started in 1973 to automate the telecommunication exchanges when transactions, financial transactions are taking place. So it's a premier financial messaging standards body. And it powers real-time gross settlement RTGS systems globally called market infrastructures. It's a secure financial messaging provision. So, but the central bank's settlement systems are part of it. Then next is 
Supreme Court issues notice to government on plea for free testing. So Supreme Court has asked the government to respond to this petition which has been filed seeking free COVID-19 testing facilities at all labs including private ones. So the legality of this March 17 advisory that there will be a cry that there will be a cap means a maximum limit on the price for testing for SARS-CoV-2 virus in private labs and hospitals and this cap is of 4,500 rupees which is claimed in the petition to be arbitrary and said to the rather government has been asked to provide free testing facilities. Then next is please seeks minimum wages for migrant workers. So Supreme Court has also expressed concern over the plight of migrant workers, especially in the unorganized sector during the lockdown. And it has asked the union government to respond by April 7 to a petition demanding that central and state governments pay their minimum wages. So this case will be heard. Presently, you should know Supreme Court is hearing cases through video conferencing. And these two cases which we discussed earlier, the one on free testing and this one on minimum wages for migrant workers are by a bench led by Justice Nageshwar Rao. So in this case also, he took a serious, the court took serious view on the declaration of the 21-day national lockdown, how it was done without prior information, as the petitioners have been arguing. And it has precipitated an unprecedented human humanitarian crisis for migrant workers. And they have been trying to reach back home. So there is a Disaster Management Act in place, which mandates central and state governments to pay compensation to those who suffer losses during a disaster. And law requires government to prepare even a national plan to combat the disaster, which has not been done in case of COVID-19. So petition is to seeking minimum wage at least for one week for migrant workers. Then next is Google publishes data on people's movement. So this is Google, its parent company is Alphabet Inc. It has published charts showing how coronavirus has brought hard hit uh, stop to many countries. So there is a stark drop in movement of people and uh, it is set to have released this data which is said to be the largest public data set available. So it can help health authorities assess if people are abiding with the government orders issued to rein in the virus. So the way traffic data is coming forth on Google Maps similarly this is an aggregated anonymized data from users who have activated their location history which has been shared by Google. And it says no personally identifiable information such as individuals location, contacts or movement will be made available. Also uh, Google says that it will employ a statistical technique called uh, adding of artificial noise to the raw data making it harder for users to, identif to be identified through it. So what is artificial noise is also good for it's a security approach so perfect secrecy can be achieved when introduced intruders channel is noisier than the receivers channel so you can see artificial noise is utilized to impair the intruders channel but it does not affect the receivers channel since the noise is generated in the null space of the receivers channel the next is foreign investors sell over 1 lakh crore securities in a month for first time in history. So for the first time in the history of Indian capital markets, foreign portfolio investors have sold securities worth over 1 lakh crore in a single month. It was 1.18 1, 1 lakh crores sold in March 2020, which is more than the double of the previous high of 44,000 crore witnessed in June 2020. So foreign portfolio investors means investors in shares as such short term investments they have been exiting the Indian market both equity and debt segments have individually registered new highs of monthly outflows respectively but then there is one entity which has been a buyer and that is domestic institutional investors so these are like those banks you know, institutions which are investing in stocks like banks insurance companies mutual funds so these domestic uh, financial institutions as such too, they have been acting as a strong counter force to the selling of foreign investors. So this data is shown here, you can see. So how outflows and inflows are seen. 
and then here you have regarding domestic institutional investors so these are indian investors investing in the indian financial market so, like banks you see domestic financial institutions insurance companies mutual funds even the new pension system it is investing in the financial market so they are called domestic institutional investors and the last news is rice export halts on supply chain disruption due to virus so indian rice traders have stopped signing new export contracts and the nation because the nationwide lockdown has resulted in labor shortages there are logistics disruptions transport cannot take place and it has hampered the delivery of even existing contracts so the halt in exports from india which is the world's biggest exporter of rice is allowing rival countries like thailand to raise their shipment in the short term and lift global prices too. so millions of people poor people in poor consumers in africa are now having to pay high prices because of this and thailand is the only key exporter to offer rice currently and has seen its export prices soaring to their highest level in seven years so that is it thank you